Thoughts and prayers from around the world continue to pour in for former South African President Nelson Mandela. The 94-year-old civil rights icon remains in critical condition and is being treated for a lung infection at a Pretoria hospital. And our next guest is a Grammy-nominated musician who worked closely with Mandela during his election, and he inspired her to start the Peace Train, an organization to heal racial divides. Sharon Katz, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Now, Sharon, you've described him as a grandfather to you. How close? are you with him and do you have any updates on how he's doing? Well, he's a grandfather to our entire nation of all South Africans. And yes, I did just speak on my way here to the studio. I phoned my friend in South Africa. And he, well, we know that he's in critical condition and South Africans have the same news that we have right now. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're disturbed, we're upset. You know, it's, it is uh, a very serious day for yeah. us. Well, tell us the story about how you first came to work with Mandela. Well, you know, after Mandela had been liberated from South African prisons, as you know, he was in jail for 27 years. 27 years. As a music, it's unspeakable. Um, yeah, unbelievable. And uh, I had this vision, you know, that I wanted to unite children and people in South Africa across the racial divides mm -hmm. to come together in a spirit of unity and to actually help Mandela to realize his vision of a non-racial democracy. And so I founded a 500-voice choir. I brought all these wow. youth and um, musicians together, and we appeared on stage. And the chairperson of the African National Congress in our province, KwaZulu-Natal, got mm -hmm. to know about it, came to the concert, and then invited me to perform for Mandela's 75th birthday. Wow. wow. So you can tell it's 20, honor. almost 20 years yeah. ago. And that's how I got to meet Madiba, and he was so excited about um, the peace train, about I talked to him about my ideas, about my concept of actually traveling around South Africa by train mm -hmm. and helping to all South Africans to know that apartheid was over and that we now could live in peace and unity together, all races together. And so what an inspiration to me, to meet him and for him to say that um, what I was doing really embodied the vision of the African National Congress, really embodied his dream of a non-racial unified South Africa. What was it like to meet him for you? Oh my gosh, take I us can back still to get that goosebumps. Day. Yeah, take us back to that day, that moment. Well, it was, first of all, I had this, you know, I had to be escorted uh, through the bodyguards, you know, and by Jeff Hadebe, who's today the Minister of Justice. Now, these politicians all were in Robben Island. They were all in jail mm -hmm. back in those days. So um, going back to the table at the banquet to meet Mandela, it was, uh, it was awesome. It was like something out of, a, out of a dream. Because, of course, Mandela being in jail, South Africans never thought they'd ever see him mm -hmm. again. And here I was, you know, meeting him in person. And um, I'll never forget, you know, the kiss that I got from him. Ah. And I did meet him on many, mm -hmm. several occasions mm -hmm. because I would be called with my peace train group and with the musicians to come and perform for Mandela whenever he came into Durban, into um, the, our city. And I also performed at the very last rally before he was elected. I mean, about 80 to 100,000 people were there. Goodness. And Mandela, flanked by bodyguards, would come up on stage and speak for hours. And he was mm -hmm. a teacher. He was an educator, he was a leader to our entire nation, mm -hmm. to, to all of us. We were all inspired by him. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit more about the Peace Train. I mean, you're celebrating your 20th anniversary. Yeah. What in the past two decades have you all specifically done? Wow. We've done a lot. Mm -hmm. We've um, raised a, a generation of children, in a sense. Um, the children that came on the Peace Train, they were 10, 12 years old when they started with us, and uh, they had never been out of their, their um, townships. Mm -hmm. they, you know, all people had to live separately in South Africa. Black townships, white areas, um, biracial people were also separated. Indian people were all separated geographically in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So this was the first time that these children had gotten to mix across the color line. And of course, it was all through the medium of music and performance. So they got to travel widely um, across South Africa with me. They traveled to America with me. Um, I've done many things. I've actually, the, the children that have grown up now doing their own projects and mm. we've even built a school together with the children. Wow. We've done a lot of things to, to try to empower South Africans because of course we have huge, huge, vast numbers of people that have not had 
access mm -hmm. to opportunities for so long because of apartheid that divided people what and neglected. What was that like for you going up under the apartheid regime? It, it was terrible. You know, it was upsetting. Apartheid was an insult to humanity, to all mm -hmm. people. Did you realize then when you were young that it was wrong? Oh, yeah. Okay. I knew as soon as I could think. Mm -hmm. As soon as I could more or less see, you know, I don't know what age that is, but as soon as you can kind of open your eyes to what's going on in the world around you, for me it was like, this is wrong. Well, how was, it, ex this. How was it explained to you? How did your parents make you make sense of something that's so illogical? Exactly. No, well, they couldn't. They couldn't. I don't mm -hmm. think that they explained it. You, you open your eyes and you see what's going on. You see that black people are being treated so unfairly and they couldn't explain it. And by them not being able to explain it and our teachers not being able to explain it, you had to find out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I used to break the laws in my country from a very young age to go to the black townships and actually mix with black people, which was strictly illegal. Yeah, it was very um, dangerous. You were hiding from police to do that, I right? I was, yeah, I was. Why because, did you risk everything to do that? Because I knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. I knew it was wrong, and it hurt. It hurt mm -hmm. me, you know. And I think that I've always was a child, you know, that felt other people's pain, you know, and I felt the pain of the black people of my country. I really did, and I, I knew it was wrong. So I made up my mind, I'm, I'm going to devote the rest of my life to, to doing the best that I can to help the well, situation. You, you know, I think a lot of people underestimate or maybe don't understand the contribution that other white South Africans have made to end civil, or to, you know, help the civil rights fight in Africa. So how does that make you feel that some people don't understand or underestimate what you and others have done? And what are some of the specific things or overall things you all have done? Well, I think, you know, um, in general, Africa is misunderstood, you know, mm. and, and, and there's so many stereotypes about Africa as a continent, you know, so it's understandable that people wouldn't know. They might not even know that there are that many white people to begin with in mm -hmm. Africa. So mm -hmm. um, that doesn't surprise me. And, and yes, we have had a lot of dedicated people across the board of all nations and all cultures in South Africa. Um, Joe Slover, for example, a white South African, he was a leader of the armed, armed resistance in South mm -hmm. Africa. Um Kunto Sizwe, he was, um, he was the leader of that, uh, of that arm of the, the armed struggle and he became the Minister of Defense. Um, people might not know that. Uh, Helen Sussman, another one, she was the lonely voice of the opposition right. for many, many years, and you know, all on her own as a white South African trying to. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, um, we took our place alongside um, black South Africans, colored South Africans, and, and Indian South Africans to, 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 to make sure that apartheid was ended forever. You know, I traveled to South Africa with the First Lady a few years ago, oh. and it seems like things have gotten better oh, in yes. South Africa. Oh, You're yes. from there. You would know better than I. How do you, what's the state of race relations like there now? Well, it's much better. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so much better. Of course, we haven't solved everything mm -hmm. um, because it's generations. It will take generations. But, oh, South Africa is a beautiful country today. It really is. It's, it's, a, it's a multiracial country. It's a cosmopolitan country. There's a lot of development. Um, it's a totally different country today than what it was when I was growing up. Everything is open now. You can live wherever you want. Of course, if you can afford it, you know, right. economics mm -hmm. dictates. But South Africa is a beautiful country today. So mm -hmm. you're currently working on a documentary yes. about your journey. Talk to us yes. about your doc. And, docu and where can we see it? When can we see it? Okay, the documentary will be available by the end of this year. Oh, fantastic. And uh, we're very delighted to be working with a team in Philadelphia, based in Philadelphia. And um, that documentary is going to trace the lives of the participants in the peace train who started, as I said, when they were really young mm. at the change uh, after Mandela had been released from prison. And so they're, today they're in their 30s mm. and they are proud citizens of South Africa. And we've interviewed them and what they've been doing and how their lives were affected over, through being in the peace train for that period of time, which was about mm -hmm. seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. And all of these years in between, what have they been doing? What are they doing today? And of course, the music and the yeah. concerts. And I bet you that gonna soundtrack is going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be That's going to be a great work. soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking we'll of be. the music, we'll you were actually nominated for a Grammy for the song that you wrote in dedication to Nelson Mandela. Now, you're going to sing a little bit of that for us today. But before yes. you do, tell us a little bit about it and why you decided to write it. Mandela is such an icon, you know, and being away and on the road such a lot, I found myself singing this humming 
this refrain, you know, and uh, it just came together as a song that I had to write a tribute mm. to the one and only Nelson Mandela. And mm. as I'm going to sing it for you, I'm going to be sending my, my heart to him. And I know that my heart is so many hearts around the world for Mandela right now. As he's, we don't want him to suffer. He's suffered enough. Yes, mm. We true. want him to, to not feel any pain. Yes. Uh, a that's peaceful my prayer. transition. That's my prayer, yeah. Now, we know just how important he was as a political figure, has been as a political figure. How important has Nelson Mandela been for the arts in South Africa and arts around the world? Oh, well, he's inspired so many people. If you just think about the Artists Against Apartheid, if you just think about the free Nelson Mandela concerts, if you mm. just think about how many <clears throat> songs have been written for Mandela, he's, he's just more than a person. Mm -hmm. Even when I performed for him with the Peace Train, I had sometimes hundreds of children on stage. Mandela would wait until after the show to shake hands with each and every single child mm -hmm. and bend down to children and ask them, where do you come from? What is your name? What, you know, I mean, what leader does that? Yes. So personable, so heart and soul for the people of South Africa, really sincere. So he's had a tremendous effect on all of us. Oh. Wow. Well, we, we revere we, him. We revere yes. him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we have to hear this. This song is called. Yes, we'll let you go Mandela. ahead and go get, get set. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, get Thank ready. You very much. And it's from your album, Imbizo. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome again to the show Sharon Katz, who will be singing Mandela, the song from her album, Imbizo, the woman who's dedicated her life to healing through music. Sharon, take it away. Stand tall, a better life for all. 